All right, the third and final video on uh, tables. There's a lot of stuff in tables, uh, a lot of stuff that they expect you to know uh, when you're taking the uh, certification uh, test. So uh, just uh, bear with me here. Uh, another thing that you can do from insert tables, so we're gonna go to insert here and tables, is choose from this list quick tables. So if you're looking for something that's been built already, like a template, all right, you can choose from one of these and it will give you what I like to call dummy data right, just to get you started. So if you're, I don't know, if you're unsure and you're uneasy and you wanna just start one off with one of the templates, you can, and you just click on it and you insert it, all right? And then you would, of course, replace whatever they've got typed in with whatever you want, and then you can size it and grow it and customize it any way you want. Just so you know, the calendars are not updatable, so whatever data you'll, they, that comes in, you'll have to manually replace it yourself. All right, so you'll have to change the month and then the numbers and, and that kind of stuff. If you're looking for a template for calendars, if you're looking for the ex exact uh, calendar to come in, um, there are templates for that. So you would go to file and you'd go to new and you type calendar, right? Uh, for whatever year you're looking for and then you can put one in. So that's a totally different situation. So those are just uh, uh, pre-formatted tables, I think is what they call them. Uh, never actually use them, but they're there. The other thing I want to talk about is is the ability to put two tables side by side within a table. They call that nesting. So it's it's kind of a, uh, I guess it's self-explanatory. You're nesting tables. So here's the easiest way to do that. All right. So you go insert and you would ask for maybe something with two columns, but one row. It's a really easy way to start. Then you insert one table in the first cell and you insert the exact table in the next cell. So let's say you wanted, so here, so I'm in the table and I'm asking for a two by three table. So there's actually now literally a table inside of a table and I, would, I could hit F4 here, which means repeat. So I got the exact same there and now I can grow that table and I can grow this table so that they're the same height. And then I can, I can get into formatting if I wanted to. So I can format this table with a style, so let's just say that I chose grid two accent six. I could do the same thing here. Grid two accent six, and you can start building your nested table, all right? So these are two tables within the table called nested. So if they're asking you to nest a table, that's how you do it. The, uh, the ability to show your grids, if you wanna see your, where your grids are, all right? So right now, I don't really see where stuff begins and ends except for the uh, the style that I've chosen. And if you have no style, there is a no style here, isn't there? Uh, maybe not. Plain table. Um, so in order to view is what I want to see here. I want to see my grid lines. Okay, so view grid lines is right here. And view grid lines allows you to see where your cells begin and end. And depending on, on what you're working on, uh, uh, that can be very, very handy. So you're able to see that. So if you don't want to view them, you turn them off. Uh, if you don't like this border, we talked about borders um, at length in a previous video. What I didn't mention is that you can use your eraser uh, to uh, uh, get rid of what the borders are going to look like. So I'm looking for the eraser here and I don't see it. Um, okay, so I found the eraser, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a formatting tool at all. Actually, it's, uh, it's the same thing as if you're trying to merge two cells. So if I turn my eraser on and I click, I've now merged these two cells. So it's more of a delete thing than a formatting thing. I, I don't use it much because I've always used merge, right? So if I'm going to merge, I'm going to turn the eraser off here. If I wanted these to be together, I've always just used merge, but er eraser does the same thing. So good to know. Um, so we talked about display grid, um, eraser, good. Uh, next thing really important is the ability to convert text into a table. So I want, I'm gonna open this, uh, this, Word, doc, this Word document here, and I've got uh, text. So if you're not using if you're not using tables, uh, you're probably using tabs and your document would look something like this, all right? And if you turn your show height on, it would look something like this, right? So you set tabs to a certain area. I find this way 
uh, to be very, very difficult. I'd way rather use a table anytime than create something like this, but you might inherit something like this. And if you do, uh, it's important to know that you can turn lists like this into a table very, very easily. Here's all you need to do. You simply select the information, the data, and you go back to insert and you go to tables and you ask to convert text to table. And the same menu you get when you insert table, all right? It's gonna ask you how many columns you want and it's guessing here. And typically it's guessing correctly. It's guessing for a reason. So I, I tend to trust what it's decided on, all right? Now you can have the fixed columns automatic or you can ask it to fit the contents, all right? And here it's, it's asking, how do you wanna separate the text? Now, depending on how you've created this, you may have something where everything's separated by commas or by dashes. So depending on the original text file, you need to give this a look, all right? This one's simple for me, it's using tabs, so I'm just gonna hit okay. And it's that fast and it's that easy. This is a feature that I've used many, many times over the years and it's rarely let me down. I've got an extra column here, no big deal. I know how to delete those. I'm just gonna go to layout here. I'm gonna say delete that column, right? And then I can resize my table and manipulate it any way that I want, the way that I would have if I created it myself. So great tool. Um, also, you, you, you should know that you can go the other way on this, right? So you can convert this to text if you wanted to and ask for tabs and then it's back, all right? Um, what I might have mentioned in a previous lesson, what you probably should know is the ability to, so now this was originally in an Excel spreadsheet, all right? And what I did was I copied it. So right now it's still copied. So I'm just gonna hit copy. And then you can bring that into Word, wrong document. You can bring it into here. And what you would do is you have options. Now in the real world, I would insert it as an Excel spreadsheet because I have all my formula options. I have all of that thing, all those things at my disposal. Uh, so oftentimes you'll be forced with the decision. Do I just copy and paste this from Excel as an Excel spreadsheet or do I bring it in as formatted text? 90% of the time I would bring it in as a spreadsheet because then you have all the power of Excel at your disposal and it looks like a neat little table, all right? But in this particular case, I, well, I did, I just brought it in as formatted text and I hit okay and it came in as a table. Very handy, very neat. And I then, for the purpose of this exercise, I selected that table and I literally replaced it. I, I turned that into text in order to start this example. So I converted, um, I converted the table to text is what I did. Okay, so by selecting my table here, I just went here, convert to text. So you, you got so many options uh, to think about when you're, when you're working this way, right? So you can take things from Excel, bring them into Word as a table, as a text, uh, or as uh, an Excel spreadsheet. So I just wanna go back in time here a little bit. I'm just gonna delete this table. So I'm gonna go to layout and delete table. And then I'm gonna take this text and put it back into a table. And then of course I can format it, I can do all the fancy things, but what I wanna get into now is formulas. So if you're not going to use, if you're not going to use the Excel feature, um, I just want you to know, and the book wants you to know, the test wants you to know, that I can put formulas inside a table. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm going to delete the contents here. I'm just going to delete this. And I'm going to ask for a formula. So from here, I can ask for a formula. And here it's asking me by default, do you want sum above? In this particular case, yes, that's exactly what I want. And I can even format it with a dollar sign if I wanted to. And then hit OK. And what it's done is it's added that. If you want to see the formula, you would have to select the answer, all right? Manually select everything and then right click and then toggle field codes, and now it's showing you what the formula is for that, right? Not, I can't tell you that I've ever done that myself, but they want you to know, and then I would toggle this again. If you change a number, right, if the price of this, let's say the price of this changes to 155, you'll notice that unlike in Excel, that did not update. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to select this now and right click 
and update the field and now it's been updated once again i can't stress enough if you're going to do math inside of a table you just convert it into a spreadsheet or do it in excel bring it in copy and paste it as a spreadsheet many more options however i digress um here i'm, gonna, I'm just going to delete this formula and i want you to know that uh, you're not limited to some above you have all kinds of things that you can use you can use average all right so i would want to start that over so i'm just going to go delete and i'm going to say average so now it's saying what do you want the average of now i can type the word above in there and it'll go above but i also want you to know that the average here that i'd be looking for would be uh, a b c d e f g i want g1 to 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so g1 so if you've used excel this is very excel ish in the sense that i'm asking for the average from g1 to g8 and okay and something went tremendously wrong so let's try this again formula oh the at the equal average wasn't in there so that's probably why that didn't work so let's try this again the equal had to be in there g2 to g8 and there we go all right so don't forget the equal it's great when the teacher makes a mistake if you need to modify this formula just do exactly what i did just just with this selected just go back to formula and start over all right it's the easiest simplest way and that should be it three uh videos lots of information on tables make sure that you've uh, you understand all of them and you practice all of them so that you're ready